Here, service pricing must consider two specific pricing challenges. The first, in order to price a service, it is important to define the unit of service consumption. For example, do we price haircuts on the basis of cutting someone's hair, as in anyone's hair, or the time it takes to cut hair? You may have noticed last time you went to a barber shop that there are different prices for different services. For example, even in haircuts, if you just want to get a simple buzz cut, it's one price. If you want fading, it's another price. At the same time, there are additional or supplementary products, such as getting your hair washed, getting your hair colored, getting your hair tinted, getting it straightened, and so on and so forth. Which leads us to the second pricing challenge. Servers that consist of bundle of elements. Should each element be priced separately or as a bundle? For example, paying extra for baggage and food on airlines. You will notice that full service airlines tend to bundle their price together, as in you're flying from Melbourne to Singapore via Singapore Airlines and as part of their service, you're going to get meals on the flight, you're going to get alcohol on the flight, you're going to get access to their entertainment, as well as a baggage allowance. However, if you fly, say, Jetstar or any other low-budget airlines, they will tend to price each element separately. As in, if you want to pre-book or buy your meal in the flight, that has a cost. Entertainment pack, that has a cost. You want to take more than just carry-on luggage, that also has a cost. Heck, if you want to decide which seat you're going to sit in, that has a cost as well. If you're wondering, is there a right or wrong way of doing this? In reality, it really does depend on the service that you're offering and the perceptions of your client or customer base. There are three categories of pricing objectives. Revenue orientated, operations orientated, and patronage orientated. Pricing objectives are the goals that guides your business in setting the cost of a product or service to your existing or potential consumers. With revenue-orientated pricing, marketers seek to maximize the profits, for example, surplus income over cost, or even simply to cover cost and break even. In reality, we want to be doing much better than breaking even because breaking even means we're not making any money, but we're also not making any losses. But in reality, we want to make money. In operations orientated, the objective is to optimize productive capacity to achieve operational efficiency or to match supply and demand through varying prices. A good example of this would be the oil industry, where the price tends to fluctuate depending on the supply of oil as well as the demand for oil. For example, right now the demand is in all-time record lows and as such the price has really dropped significantly. And the last one, patronage oriented pricing. This tries to maximize the number of customers using the service. Thus, prices vary with different market segments, ability to pay, and methods of payment such as credit cards are offered that increase the likelihood of a purchase. Other examples also include options like lay-by, as in a system of paying a deposit to secure an item for later purchase. And of course, there are companies these days like Afterpay, who also provide additional services for people to pay over a prolonged period of time, and thereby maximizing the number of customers using the service.